<laughs> After my trip through Benin, I crossed all of Togo to reach the border with Ghana and catch a plane to this small and unknown archipelago. Sao Tome and Principe, the second smallest country in Africa and the place closest to the center of the world. We began our journey with a brief stop in the capital of Sao Tome. With just 70,000 inhabitants, everything here moves calmly to the rhythm of the country's motto, Leve Leve. After some initial shopping, we headed directly south and began to appreciate some of the landscapes that awaited us over the next 10 days. And then we arrived to our first destination, undoubtedly the best value accommodation of all we visited. The service was incredible and the views were breathtaking. And without wasting any time, we set out in search of adventure. A stroll through this palm tree plantation, which anyone would say is getting ready for the carnivals, and our first encounter with Pico Cao Granji, the main feature of Sao Tome landscape. Sao Tome has been an independent country since 1975 and from its colonization it inherited its language, the Portuguese. Although quite different from the Brazilian Portuguese that I know, it's not that difficult to understand and people would make a huge effort <laughs> to decipher my Portuñol, my mix of Spanish and Portuguese, so it worked out great. Here most of the people live off agriculture, fishing and tourism and the lifestyle is still quite rural and traditional. As for food, the island's diet usually includes fish, seafood, bananas, cassava, sweet potatoes, rice and tropical fruits such as pineapple and mango. One of the places you cannot miss here is the mangroves of Matanza. Mangroves are forests flooded by salt water found in tropical and subtropical coastal areas. 
hosting an incredible ecosystem that is home to many species of animals. They also protect against erosion and act as a natural barrier against storms and hurricanes. However, they are one of the most threatened ecosystems due to deforestation, pollution and climate change. And finally, we reached the south of the island when one of the locals we met warned us. The residents of a village are protesting the poor state of the roads. They have set up barricades and blocked the road. No one can go north. Sao Tome has only a single road that is impossible to pass without an off-road car. And the residents have been asking the government for a solution for years. So while we wait for the government and the protesters to reach an agreement, all we can do is endure and remain isolated, albeit in paradise. Mira, es esta tela de araña. And well, many thanks to our friend Bastien, a Frenchman who has a beautiful accommodation where he also grows vanilla and distills his own alcohol. Despite not having space for us, he allowed us to come on his land and show us some of the most beautiful spots in the island. And taking advantage of the roadblock, we did what we had come to do. 
look for the center of the world. And well, after playing as little fish for a while and not finding the center of the world, we replenished our strength and went in search of it on foot. Okay, okay, it's true that maybe the actual center of the world is a bit far, but Ileo da Rolas is the closest land point. And it also happens to pass right through the equator, so it counts, right? And three days later, with the road now unblocked, we left behind the south and its wonderful beaches and arrived at our last stop, Boca do Inferno. The last stop of this video, but not of this trip. So see you next time.